What up, everybody? Wiser Wonder here, coming at you live, um, courtesy of Pro Air and uh, the quarantine. Um, so today, I'm going to be showing you guys some tips and tricks about Tattoo Pro. Um, Tattoo Pro stencils, as you know, are a uh, super advanced airbrush tattoo stencil product that allows any airbrush artist to do realistic airbrush tattoos um, with pretty minimal effort. Um, obviously, the more effort you put into something, the better it always comes out, uh, which is why we practice. But generally, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty easy way to do some very high details, realistic airbrush tattoos, which are gaining popularity around the world. I mean, um, ever since I released them in 2015 or 16, 15, 16, um, you know, it's kind of actually been growing to the point where, you know, you, you see it all over the world. There are tattoo pro users, you, you guys all over the world, you know, making these tattoos come to life. And it's really fun because, you know, as airbrush artists and, uh, you know, entertainers were, you know, given an opportunity to, you know, entertain people through fulfilling a fantasy that they may have of having a tattoo. Um, you know, one of the things that I notice because, you know, as you know, I go all around the country, sometimes the world even, um, to different events and I do thousands of these tattoos. I mean, I can't even, uh, my photo reel on my phone, my photo album, you wouldn't believe how many pictures it has like 14,000 pictures and probably half of those are pictures of airbrush tattoos because I always take a picture of everything I do. Um, you know, taking pictures of your work allows you to self critique, it allows you to grow, it allows you to check out and see what you're doing, what you're not doing, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it can help, but yeah, I mean, um, I'm doing lots and lots of these tattoos and and what's funnier is I'm doing them at tattoo shows as well sometimes. Um, but point is, is like for everybody that's out there that wants to get a tattoo for whatever reason, there are five people who want to get a tattoo, but either can't, won't, or don't for whatever reason. Um, whether it's a financial thing, whether it's a, you know, the most popular answer is I'm a scared of needles. Afraid of needles, ain't getting nowhere near me with a needle. And those are the people who love the airbrush tattoo the most because, you know, they're willing to pay, they're willing to pay you to let them live a fantasy for a few days. Um, so it's super fun, super exciting opportunity to interact with people and kind of, uh, you know, the energy you receive back from making somebody else's little dream come true. Um, it can be, you know, very exciting. Uh, now getting asked if you do real tattoos is, you know, getting asked if you do that, that's, you get to add asked about every single tattoo you do. So, you know, you got to kind of put a mental block, uh, on, you know, letting that bother you, I guess. Um, I think even just as face, I think face painters and also, you know, always get asked, Hey, do you do, do you do tattoos? And I think that's just because, um, you know, Tattoos are probably the most accessible art form um, that people think of when they think of art. Because when they think about art, they think about what they see the most. And right now that's graffiti, tattoos, makeup. Okay, so um, makeup and tattoos are closely tied because the whole airbrush tattoo thing. Um, but you know, generally, um, you know, there's some tie in there and people kind of relate, try to relate to you as an artist by bringing tattoos in the mix. Because if you do tattoos, then they have something to talk to you about. They can relate to you, you know? So that's why that question gets asked a lot. Um, um, so, you know, I'm going to touch on that here for a second because, you know, uh, this is a story of something that happened to me personally get a sip of coffee here air is dry here in Denver um but you know I it took me a year to figure this out because I had never done it before but you know doing a whole year worth of gigs 
and kind of going into this and not expecting to be asked that question so much, you know, and it's not necessarily getting the question asked. It's just that it's always worded the same. And I'm sure you all have experienced this. And the question is, is do you do real tattoos as well? Or do you just do this? Okay. So, you know, hearing that, you know, over and over and over and over and over again, hundreds and hundreds of times for a, for a period of time, you know, consciously, you know, yo, what I do is important. Uh, what I do is fulfilling. What I do is fun. I love what I do. And pretty much every person you come in contact with saying, oh, do you do something else that I think is more profitable than this or better than this? Or do you just do this? And, you know, it kind of could take your toll if you don't think about it a certain way. And it took me realizing that people don't ask this question because they think tattooing is way better than what I'm doing. Okay, that's not true. That's something I made up in my own head. They're asking this because, like I just said, if you say yes, then they have something to talk to you about. They have something to relate with you because maybe they have a tattoo or they, or they have a tattoo they're thinking of or they just want to tell you why they can't get tattoos, but they love them so much. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I've actually experimented and I've gone with saying yes, you know, people ask me where my shop is. They want to get a tattoo from me, you know, and I stopped doing that because, you know, obviously I don't do tattoos. Um, I was just trying to figure out something to alleviate that whole mental pressure of, you know, everybody saying, oh, do you do this? T do you do tattoos also or just this, you know? And so I had to put it in perspective. And I had to, you know, let people know or, you know, let myself know that these people aren't asking me this question because they think what I do is less, less valuable of an art as tattoos. They're just asking so that they can try to find a point to relate as one human being to another. Um, and then, you know, because ultimately that's what we look for. We look for a connection. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you meet somebody and you talk the same language or you have something in common. It's a lot easier to get a dialogue going a lot easier to, to make connections. So anyways, once I started putting it in that perspective, bam, um, I wasn't devaluing it in my own head. Now I, you know, now I know the psychology of it and I even understand the psychology of why I felt that way. Um, but yeah, so airbrush tattoos are very peculiar. I mean, it's, it's a little different from, um, face painting in the sense that, you know, I, I find myself working with mostly adults and I think a lot of you that have an airbrush tattoo set up probably will be working with teenagers to adults unless you have a specific kid thing going on. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, that's a whole market in itself. Um, but you know, as a, as you know, airbrush tattoo specific things going on, you know, it's, it's really easy to, uh, to, to make people happy and have a great time doing it. Um, so a couple of things I want to share with you guys today is like how I, how I am inspired by my designs, um, how I, um, you know, come up with new stuff as far as like, you know, doing it, doing something on models. Um, cause every now and then, um, you know, generally when I'm doing a gig, I'll have, I, it's a dynamic setup where it's part of a marketing footprint um y'all know what a footprint is we work at them all the time it's when a marketing agency represents a company you go to a space you do a little promotion get they give away swag they get an airbrush tattoo um and then you know you're doing airbrush tattoos free of charge to the attendees of the event while getting paid a day rate from the organizers of the event or the marketing agency um of the company you're representing um, so it's, it's super easy. Uh, I, I have a menu of about five to five to eight tattoo pro design sheets. Um, so people generally choose from the menu. Um, sorry. Hey, what up everybody? Um, uh, anyways, where was I? Okay, so I generally have a menu of, of, of some designs to choose from. Everybody generally picks from the menu. Um, 
every now and then somebody will come along and be like, just do you, homie. Just, just do you. Do whatever you want. Be inspired. You're the artist. Whatever. All right. So those times are, are you know, they're cool. A lot of times, though, I'm just kind of going, I'm just doing a go-to design um, that worked out really good in like a practice session or something. You know, you know, I ha you know, I'll be on my skins, practicing on my skins. Um, and generally, if I figure out a really good design on my skins while I'm practicing, I um, will remember it. I'll take a picture of it. I'll remember it. And the next time somebody at a gig says, yo, just do what you want. Go crazy. I'm going to have something new to do. I know you guys have seen the skull that I do with the fire or the filigree like so many times. That's one of my go-tos. That's one of the designs that I can do amazing every time when put on the spot. And to the client, it looks super fancy. And it is. It's detailed. It's super fancy. But to me, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like something I got in the bank of, of designs I want to try or do. You know what I mean? Um, one of my biggest inspirations though, is just looking at, is, is seeing other artwork, um, seeing what people are doing in the actual tattoo industry. Um, I've been very blessed to be able to, to work, um, work alongside and, you know, around some very amazing tattooers and work some tattoo shows where, you know, there's just some amazing artists going on and, and tattooing is a whole other different world. Um, I love tattooing. I'm a tattoo enthusiast. I have lots of tattoos. Y'all know that. Um, I, I, for some reason, I don't have a bug to go into tattooing. I don't know why. I just, you know, rather do what I do. Um, and that's me. You know what I mean? So anyways, I look around. I look what's going on in the real tattoo world. Um, we have the most information available to us at any given time now more than ever. Um, you know, it's very easy to, to find some inspiration. Um, if you're, if you're willing to look for it, you know, it doesn't just come to you. You gotta, you gotta find it. Um, you know, lots of people think that artists just get stoned and stoned being stoned makes you more creative and it's like nah the creativity's there i think the being stone just removes the inhibition um of actually creating the artwork that's kind of in your subconscious ready to come out um anyways so when in regards to tattoo pro um and using them to create airbrush tattoos i'm looking all over the place for inspiration i'm looking at tattoos i'm looking at graffiti i'm looking at makeup artists I'm just kind of seeing what everybody's doing, making sure to kind of like, if I am, if I am using something as direct inspiration, now direct inspiration is kind of a tricky thing. Uh, a lot of people would call it copying. Um, and essentially it is, um, but as long as you understand that copying is sort of kind of part of human nature it's something that, that, um, even things down to the cellular level, do they copy and, and reproduce and creativity you know what i'm saying like creativity evolves when when people take an idea and add their own uh you know amalgamate it with their own idea and then it becomes a whole new idea uh for instance like anybody could do could look at this moth painting behind me okay actually y'all seen this i posted it uh, uh, last week um well, I'm not going to take it off the wall because it's got some uh, Velcro stuff, but anybody could look at this moth painting and be inspired by it. They could then go draw a moth with, you know, I'm going to draw a moth with a shape and a jewel too. Bam. You know what I mean? As long as they don't like copy my shape line for line and color for color and they're, you know, putting shapes that inspire them or, or you know, putting their own twist to it, then that's kind of like... You know, it's, it's, it's their twist. Obviously you don't want to copy. Copying is okay at first. Um, when you're like super, super starting out. Um, and, in uh, and other, uh, don't get me wrong. This is not part of, you know, our job is airbrushing. Um, because with face painting and 
airbrush tattooing, body art, we're doing a copy of a thing over and over and over and over and over again. That's kind of what we're yeah. painting. Um, but on an artistic note, you know what I mean? Like, you direct inspiration is okay. Um, you want to obviously, uh, you know, just think about how you would do it or, or uh, you know, putting your own twist on things. I'm heavily inspired by tattoo artists, especially when trying to come up with new ways to mix and match my tattoo pro stencils to create something original. Um, and also, you know, arrangements that the, the arrangements that tattooers make are just like awesome. You know, they're actually just like us. Their canvas is a very small area of skin that's, you know, 3D. Most of the time it's not flat. So, um, I'm going to show you one of my best ways to kind of build a bank of inspiration. Um, because until you practice enough, this kind of won't come on its own. So you got to go looking for it. Um, it's much like learning to play an instrument. You know what I mean? Like if you're learning to play, uh, the banjo or the guitar or any instrument, like you're going to start out playing songs like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and The Muffin Man and songs that you copy and you seek out in different levels of difficulty. Um, and then after a while you get, you know, you get better. And then once you reach a certain point, then ideas start to come out of you, you know, start to formulate because until then you don't know um, you know, what to do. So you have to, you have to, um, you know, but then once you're at a point where you can start, um, creating ideas of your own, you know, that's, that's when you've really practiced enough to, to learn what you're doing. Um, so super, super easy to use our technologies to find inspiration. Everybody, I know you've got Instagram, you've got Facebook. I've come to find Instagram as an actual better way to process through imagery. So, um, you know, there's a, a few hashtags that I follow. Um, they're called, um, you know, you, cause you could follow a hashtag on Instagram. So I follow hashtags like amazing tattoos, um, you know, best tattoos, just, tattoo you can follow all these different hashtags black and gray tattoos and pretty much every image that's hashtag with those same hashtags will pop up in your feed and you can just sit there and scroll through you know inspiration um in regards to tattoo pro one of the things that i specifically look for um is images that are a tattoo or another piece of artwork that have the same kind of imagery for, um, you know, same the same imagery as the Tattoo Pro sets that I have in my collection. Um, for instance, um, if I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see a tattoo with, um, here, I'll just, I'll show you what I kind of got in my, uh, in my little bank. Got on my iPad. I have an album of pictures I've saved. Um, and these, these are tattoos that I notice and I can be like, hey, that's really cool. I like the way that looks. I think I can maybe replicate that a little bit with Tattoo Pro stencils. Um, you know, when I'm... One of my, uh, so I just screen grab this photo. Look at this tattoo. This tattoo is so cool. It's so awesome. It's got an owl, a candle, a lily down there at the bottom. It's got some like swirly smoke. Um, this is uh, Martin S. Juberg is the uh, tattooer. Um, super amazing piece of artwork. That's super inspiring to me because I have in my Tattoo Pro uh, collection an owl, a candle. Um, I can, I have a lily. I can create the smoke with my swabs. 
um, you know, I could really use this to be inspired by to, uh, you know, replicate in a airbrush tattoo, uh, which would be cool because, you know, then it even has an even more level, higher level of realism, you know, it's not going to look the exact same as this. It's definitely not because our owl looks different. Our candle looks completely different. Our lily's way different. You know what I'm saying? But the, the takeaway here is I'm looking for images that inspire me because they have elements that I know I have in my airbrush tattoo kit. An owl, lily, candle, smoke is easy. Boom, that's it. So I saved that photo. Maybe one of these days. Um... I can try it out on somebody. That's kind of the uh, the thought process. You know, there's a really amazing tattooer uh, named uh, Jack Con Jack Connolly, and he had this tattoo last year that was just like ridiculous. It was a hand tattoo, and the hand was all candles. The, uh, the fingers were all candles, and it was all super optical illusion. Like what? Super, super crazy dope, right? Um, so in a class, um, you know, this is my airbrush tattoo version using Tattoo Pro stencils. So it doesn't look the exact, exact same, but it's kind of, you know, it's, it's got the candle fingers, it's got a skull, it's got some smoke, um, super heavily inspired by that tattoo. Um, you know, I even, I when I airbrush tattoo like this and it's like, you know, very obviously inspired. You always uh, shout out the artist. Notice I don't have any of these cut out. All their, you know, Instagram name is, is in there so that I could shout them out. Because that shit's dope. Uh, that's how social media works these days. Um, so, all right. Uh, I'm getting down here. And this one, super fun little tattoo. Hummingbird with some flowers. Like... We got a hummingbird. We got some flowers. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I can use, you know, what airbrush tattoo stencils I have in my tattoo pro set, along with Pro Air ink to kind of recreate this. And you'll kind of get a good, good idea of how you can replicate. Um, it's more borrowing the arrangement than it is copying the artwork, because obviously your artwork is going to look completely different. Um, but I'm going to get my little practice skin set up here. All right, here we go. Let's see. That one's at a little bit of a different angle as I point it up a little bit. I usually do it kind of like this. Um, but that one's got kind of like a little upward thing going on. So You guys will notice I'm not like uh, I'm not like my air is always on. I'm always spraying air, and that helps the ink that I've already sprayed onto the surface or the skin. Um, it actually helps that ink to dry a little bit. Um, sometimes if you keep if you just bunch of ink, spray a bunch really thick on top of the skin it won't dry very quickly if you will go way too thick, but if you, a little bit at a time, it dries fairly quickly. Um, and then you don't have problems with the stencil sticking to itself. Well, I'm just gonna add some background there a little bit. Okay, so what else, what do we got next? We got our hummingbird. Now we got some little cherry blossom flowers. Let's, let's get some cherry blossom flowers in here. See, I got one here. Um, let's see, there's a few, so I'm going to do another one here. I can always remove any overspray that's kind of like 
messing up my thing. Um, um, Z, what up, yo? Uh, Z is asking about the tattoo skins. Uh, yes, they're, you can buy them at uh, perfectpracticetools.com. Um, that's me and Jay's site where we got our practice tools going on. So feel free to hit that site up, um, perfectpracticetools.com. That has the skins for sale. Liz, what up, yo? See, this one's going to go behind the wing. So I'm making sure not to go over the wing because I want these next flowers to be kind of... So you can see how it's already kind of starting to take a different shape um, than the one in the picture. Because number one, the hummingbird is not the same shape. Number two, um, it's, uh, you know, it's just going to look different. Um, Carla is asking, can you explain what you mean by always using air? Okay, so when using a dual action airbrush, just like this Iwata Eclipse bottle feed, um, you have two mechanisms. You have double action. First action is pressing down. That's air. Only air comes out of the airbrush. Okay, second action is pulling back out of the airbrush at that point. Um, so when I'm not, like the air is always spraying on the surface, okay? The air is always spraying. Ink does not always come out of the, um, the, the nozzle, not unless you're pulling back on here. Um, some airbrushes do not have dual action. Some airbrushes are single action only. Um, so if you have a thing where your air and your paint always come out at the same time, no matter what, then you might have this type of airbrush that does not have a dual action that will not allow you to, um, you know, only spray air. All right, I like the way this is looking. I think I'm gonna add like one more little flower up here. And maybe one more little one poking out of here. Damn, all right, so that's looking super fresh. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start shadowing it in. Freestyle tool. If you are a Tattoo Pro user who does not have the freestyle tool set, it is imperative that you get one. Um, now, a lot of people might think that that set is not important because it doesn't look like anything. Um, when in fact, it is probably the most important because of, um, you know, because it, it actually is not supposed to look like anything. It's supposed to help you shadow all of your airbrush tattoos in uh, for an even more realistic look. See how I use it to mask and I spray and it blocks off part. Um, I can use that to make separations in the flower petals. This is gonna help our tattoos look actually 3D versus just kind of stamped in place. So super good to know. You can also use freehand techniques. I use that a lot. It doesn't leave as hard of an edge. Um, but generally I like to use the, the edge of the tool. See how I use the freehand technique along with it? Um, so right now I'm using ProAir ink on my practice skin. Um, ProAir ink is the alcohol-based um, is the alcohol-based airbrush tattoo ink. Um, the color is Tattoo Pro Black. Um, that is the uh, realistic tattoo color. Um, 
it does the color does add to the realism of the tattoo if you have just black that's fine uh, black works but if it's the tattoo pro black with the bluish hue to it it's gonna seal the deal even that much more i'm telling you um, so that's what I'm using now. So you can see how it has that little bit of blue to it. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. I think that uh, I'm ready for my swab. Let's see here. Now I can start doing my highlighting. On this hummingbird, I kind of just like to dab this around and kind of remove little bits because then it kind of like looks like feathers. See that? Same here. As long as you don't do too much, it kind of has a great effect. See that there? Can you use this one to kind of... I've got my... I've got this flower leaf. Need to remove some spray there. You can see that my swab is getting a little dirty. I have to switch it here. Um, get a new swab. Carla asks how long does a bottle of ink usually last um so i generally on my airbrush keep a uh two ounce bottle um and a two ounce bottle will get me through a whole entire day of i want to say um you know some of those days i'd be working them them outdoor events I was doing anywhere from 50 to 100 people in a day I'd say on average is probably about 65 70 so and that was like sometimes half sleeve sometimes tiny tattoos most of the time half sleeve uh, that was what was popular that's what people wanted um, half sleeve they wanted as big as they could get it as big as I would allow and I'd just be like yeah that's uh you know got to got to do one on everybody so you can't get anything bigger than a half sleeve because you won't believe how many times i got begged for sleeve i mean i'm serious um i'm gonna also get one more new swab and do a couple of little swoopy loops um antoinette what kind of paper are you practicing on um newspaper yeah newspaper is um very difficult because it soaks up very fast um this is actually not paper this is a practice skin um it's uh available at perfectpracticetools.com and it's for practicing airbrush tattoos on uh developed by uh jay bautista and i um alongside a head that well we developed the head um, these practice skins have been around for a while. They've been in the tattoo industry for years. Um, okay, let me see here. I think I'm going to put the finishing touches on here with my uh, swirly dirty swoopy loops. Yep, swoopy loops. Uh, let's see here. You see, I keep spraying the air for a second. That kind of is going to help. This is kind of like another go-to set for me because it just has so much going on. Like, it's just the perfect accent for almost any tattoo, uh, whether masculine or feminine. Um, so you really can't go wrong. I mean, a lot of times I'll use the tribal for dudes. Um, another one of my favorite accent stencils to use as a go-to is this one from the um, Kim Brennan Henna set, available at ProAir.com. Um, 
definitely one of my favorite sets to use. You can use it on its own, or you can use it um, as accent, which I do a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, it's one of the things that just really kind of adds an extra, extra detail level to, you know, what you're doing. And people love that. Like, people... People step away from this amazed that you just like did this, you know what I mean? And super easy. Just gotta practice a little bit. You know, spend some time. Yeah, see how I'm just kinda like evening it out. There was like a big kind of empty space there, and now it's Oh, I know, it's kind of evened out. Um, I could probably stick, stick something coming out like... See how that works? Super awesome. All right. I think that's pretty done. Um... up close to this read some questions nikki i recently got a compressor and airbrush and haven't unboxed it yet it came with black alcohol based oh where did it go i lost your question there what do you use to clean the airbrush okay so for alcohol based paint and makeup nikki you want to use alcohol um that is what you clean it with um that'll clean out your supplies that'll also clean up uh spills and stuff too uh patty the skin is really easy to clean you basically spray it down with alcohol and uh spray a paper towel with alcohol and it'll wipe clean there's a demo video available on the website that we have them for sale at uh perfectpractice um the ink is available at pro air so are the stencils you can get all pro air i mean sorry you can get all tattoo pro stencils uh av available at proair.com um, she has, uh, Donna has some great packages available for, uh, you know, for stencils and ink. Um, it's just a go-to because you can always get your ink and any stencil updates, um, yourself. Uh, Dale, where are those special shape swabs sold at and what are they called? Great question. Um, let's set this up here so I can look at you guys. Uh, the swabs are called cosmetic swabs. Okay. You can find them. Um, these are the ones I use, Swispers Applicators, okay? It's Cosmetic Applicator Swab. Um, <laughs> you can get them at Walgreens. Um, you can get them at uh, pretty much any store, like a Walgreens, CVS, uh, Dwayne Reed or whatever that sells like um, makeup products, like has a makeup section. Um, you can get them at Walmart too. Uh, I'm not gonna give out my my personal source because last time I did that, y'all went and bought them out of stock for like three months. So um, yeah, uh, next place I know is <laughs> uh, uh, I, I I don't know, man. Is it wrong of me to 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 be stingy with my source? Um, I wasn't stingy. <laughs> uh, no, it's not a secret source. It's actually just. Uh, walgreens.com if you order through walgreens.com and buy more than just you buy like four four of these at a time you get like a little bit of a discount um it's not like a super secret super hookup or anything but uh go easy don't go buy them out don't go panic buying the cosmetics while no, i'm just joking <laughs> oh man toilet paper shit's crazy um yeah so cosmetic swabs that's what you use those. Um, do you use, okay, let's see here. Um, I'm losing the question. There's too many questions coming in here. Bettina, which side of the skin are you using? The side with the skin, with the pig and texture, or the slick side? Um, so generally the skin has, is textured on one side. I use both sides. Uh, I just, you know, a lot of times we'll flip it over and keep going on the other side, uh, or I'll wipe it off. It doesn't matter. It work like it works the best on the textured side, um, and it doesn't. 
Um, you know, if you do it on the slick side, it, it works, but it'll come off easier because that material, that uh, side is so slick. Um, I hope that helps. Um, Dan asks if I'm planning on conducting any class as the pandemic ends. And uh, yeah, Dan, um, I haven't really, I've only been, uh, the only classes I've been really doing as of lately are online and at uh, some makeup schools um, such as Metamorphosis in France. Um, there is not really any plans other than like more online stuff. Um, me personally, I feel like any knowledge I have to give is better released online because that way a broader range of people have access to it. Um, you know, I've done, I did for years the whole traveling around and teaching classes thing. And, you know, it, it works in some contexts and it works worse. Sorry, it doesn't work in others, you know, like you can, uh, one thing with the in-person classes is they have to be super expensive. You know what I mean? Because you're having to cover travel costs, you're having to cover materials costs, you're having to cover all kinds of costs that you don't necessarily have to when you release information online. So I personally um, like the online portion better. Um, but you know, you never know. Keep your ear out. Uh, keep your ears open. Um, uh, there might be like some kind of uh, event or something. Um, do you use anything to protect the floor during gigs? What material would you suggest if I wanted to use something while I'm learning? Um, you know, I stopped, personally, I stopped using floor protectors, uh, but they are always a good idea. I don't know if it's cocky of me to be like, I don't need no floor protector, I never spill. Um, I have spilled a couple of times and lucky for me, I know how to clean up a spill without a trace for the most part, uh, so, you know, I think it's a good idea to have a floor protector. Uh, so you could just use a black drop cloth or even just a regular colored, a regular, uh, you know, six foot by six foot drop cloth. That'll, that folds up easily, can be kept with your kit and washed, you know, washed here and there. And yeah, I'm for it. I'm about it. Um, definitely. You share a lot so you can keep secrets. <laughs> Well, you know, sharing is caring, everybody. Sharing is caring. So usually it takes uh, two rounds of wiping um, for cleaning these skins off. Just spray it down with alcohol. And I'm also spraying my paper towel with alcohol. Okay. I want to be careful for it dripping. You could do it. It's best done on a flat surface. Um, but essentially I'm just going to Use one wipe. A lot of times the smears kind of stay, so I'll fold my paper towel over. Make sure it still has plenty of alcohol, and I'll just give it another, another rundown. Bam. Um, Antoinette, the name of the website for the skins is perfectpracticetools.com. I can't uh, type it in right now, but I will um, as soon as I finish up here. Uh, all right, so back to my inspiration board here. Um, what else do I got? Uh, this one I just came across the other day. I think it's super cool. It's got a girl with a butterfly uh over the eyes and some like kind of mandala henna kind of type of materials some little dangly things and i'm like man all right cool that looks really great i like uh i have a girl from the femme fatale set of uh big ink tattoo pro i have a butterfly definitely i definitely got some of that lacy mandala type of uh stencil and i've got one of these for my kim brennan set and I, I think we could uh, do something with that there. So let's give it a shot. So I'm going to have to improvise a little bit because the, old, the butterfly that I have is a sideways butterfly. And that's fine, but what I'm going to have to improvise on is the body. Um, so you'll kind of get to see how I do that. Since they're in the foreground uh, uh, in front of the face, we're going to have to do the wings first. Um, let's see here. Find a center. So I'm just gonna kind of like 
stay inside the wing area. For now. Notice my ink does not go on very heavy. I come back and do more. If you put it on really heavy all, all at once, it's it's gonna it's gonna be really thick and it's gonna take longer to dry. So you know we're just trying to keep away from that. You see, I had some little bit of spray. I can get rid of that real quick before I continue on with my design. And I just use my swab. I want to get rid of that too. Wipe it away. All right, so as far as the body, I have to kind of, like I said, improvise a little bit. So I'm going to actually, I'm still gonna use this body, but I'm gonna kind of, I don't know if this will work. Let's see if this will work. it over okay so I kind of I kind of got a usable body going on there perfect um, next is the uh, and I just got to remember that I have to put a shadow here under the wings because uh, you know the face is behind the shadow so I don't want to go too high up um, I got to remember that the the wings have to go in there so let's see here I want to hide the eyes, so the eyes have to be like kind of up here. Okay, cool. Now I have my lace. This will kind of give us that bit of that mandala. Um, mandala look And then I'm just going to take a quick peek because she has kind of like, it's not really a gem. It's more of like another part of the design. Um, but I think I, on mine, I want to put a gem right here. I think that would be pretty, pretty cool. I'm going to find my gemstones. In alphabetical order here. Gemstones. Here we go. that one there is also a kind of teardrop shape that looks cool i like that let me use that one All right, now I can take my lace again and
Don't mind my clipboard. <laughs> we got oh we got uh, we got this here trusty uh, henna Kim Brennan henna stencil that I would so love to use for my accents it's Also, this guy. This is another Kim Brennan henna stencil. So I can go like this. See that? All right. Now we've got the freestyle tool and can start shadowing this in. Now remember our wings to our butterfly. So I have to kind of use that parameter to uh, shadow in the girl here, the face. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little Kind of shining around. I'm gonna have to make some highlights. Um, the bottom lip definitely needs a. The butterfly is starting to get get some shadowing. It's looking pretty good. Um, I like to also use the freestyle tool to kind of add some texture to the wings of the butterfly. We can add some depth to the texture of the uh, lace here. Just stepping. Dog hair. So you can kind of do this part how you want. It's just kind of like where what you want to separate and bring forward or push back. Um, I kind of, just important is to do it the same way every time. That's gonna help with consistency. Just do it the same way every time. And before you know it, you'll be doing it on autopilot.
Am I still alive? My mama was calling me. <laughs> I was worried it kicked me off. Okay, so this is a little tricky uh, here on the gem. So I wanna basically like hook it up with a bunch of lines. Um, I line up the corners and I just basically like give it a little tiny spray in each little section. And then do the same here. Just kind of line it up. And then I usually do like a small fade. And a couple of little shine lines. Hey, we're almost ready to uh, start swabbing it up. Adding a little bit more shadow around down here. Definition here for the body of the butterfly. All right, now it's time for some swab action. Hey, just good. Ah, oh, thanks. Always a pleasure. Um, first thing I'm going to do is take my pointy side of my swab and I'm going to add in all my little dots for my Okay, get another swab do it again on the other side Okay. Now I have this girl to kind of highlight the nose, chin a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy because I'm actually going to tone those back down. So I'll put a little bit of a highlight on the lip here. Um, a little bit of cheeks. All right, now I'm going to move on to the rest of everything, especially on these. Highlight all these little guys. Then I'm going to highlight just certain little edges of this. Okay. And then I think that's about it for the highlighting. 
go ahead and just kind of tone down these adjustments a little bit. And then the same here, like some of these just a little bit more shadowing. Just, just to finish it off, I'll flip it around, do it pointed down on the other side. There we go. And a couple points up here. inspiration versus the finished airbrush tattoo you know it's uh, inspired by not copied I mean it's copied in a way it's more about uh, it's not copying the artwork it's it's replicating the arrangement um, the arrangement of the butterfly over the face with the ornamentation, like that arrangement was very pleasing. And I replicated it using my own stencils um, in my Tattoo Pro kit. So super cool, super fun. Um, and uh, yeah, that ended up coming out pretty cool. I mean, see, I'd have never, I probably would have never tried this if I wasn't, uh, um, you know, if I didn't have these uh, things I was looking at, looking you know at things, I'm sitting um, here. Uh, making sure that they, uh, you know, f if it has elements of, of stuff in tattoo pro where I'm like, Oh, I could do that with tattoo pro. I could do that with my stencils. I could, you know, whatever's in my collection matches up. Like I could do that. Um, and bam, you could do it too. Um, you know, so, you know, you all know tattoo pro it's, it's super easy. And, and, and all the sets, they come with their own artwork, to to replicate um you know but if you want to do some really really fancy stuff surround yourself with the inspiration figure you know get a practice skin or paper works too uh newspaper's probably too thin but you can use i use uh it's called uh oh what is it called uh bristol i use a thick bristol paper sometimes and that that works out great um Darla, is the Tattoo Pro kit for sale? Or do you miss that question? Uh, tattoo Pro stencils, uh, you can buy them in sets. You can buy them individually. Um, you could buy them from ProAir.com. Uh, definitely check that out. Donna at ProAir always has uh, amazing uh, groupings of um, stencils and inks. You can, you know, one good thing about ordering from ProAir is you can get your ink and your stencils at the same time if you're either First. grabbing some stencils or you're adding new designs to your uh, collection you know you're always going to get ink you always need ink um you know so you're always going to be going to get ink so if you could also you know re-up on your on your uh, on your stencil supply you know that's good too um but yeah definitely ch definitely check out her she doesn't just have tattoo pro stencils either uh, ProAir.com has stencilized face painting stencils. They've got Kim Brennan henna stencils. Um, they've got uh, their own line of accent stencils as well. So, you know, check them all out. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, definitely check them out. And definitely check out the Tattoo Pro stuff. You know, Tattoo Pro is specifically designed by me i'm a body artist i you know like i came up in this little body art industry and i i you know saw what was available and i invented something to you know i created something to fill a space that needed 
something there. You know, people were looking for realistic air, uh, airbrush tattoos because tattoos are more popular now than ever. I mean, ever. Everybody knows what's up with tattoos, even if they don't get them. They just, they have the reasons they don't get them. But, you know, they're just as popular with people who don't get tattoos because of TV shows like Ink Master. You know how with body art, we have Naked Vegas, we got Skin Wars, like, face off like these shows really put a spotlight on us as makeup artists and face painters you know what i'm saying and it did the same thing for tattooers um and i think enough you know back on that do you do real tattoos question you know like a lot of people saw body paint shows where tattooer or were or tattoo shows where they did body paint or uh i there was an episode of skin wars i think that had a tattooer do body paint you know what i mean like there's there's that relation um but yeah tattoos are more popular now than ever uh one thing to kind of think about is like you know how this quarantine and this virus thing is going to affect makeup you know and our world that we kind of live in with makeup you know yeah we have our sanitary practices but that doesn't uh psychologically i think people are going to be affected for a while um and I think typical brush and sponge air uh, brush and sponge face painting is going to be at risk for people, you know, kind of staying away from it possibly, and and actually moving towards stuff like airbrush face because painting. there's no con contact, you know, there's no there's only only air and paint coming out the airbrush and hitting the skin, you know, you're not taking a brush and dipping it in water. Oh, and then in makeup and then on a face and then back in the makeup and then back on the face. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're actually not making any contact with the skin at all. Maybe with the stencil. Um, but generally we clean the skin off with alcohol and disinfect before we put on, you know, put on an airbrush tattoo anyway. So, you know, something to think about, man. I mean, I know a lot of you already have an airbrush compressor sitting in the garage or sitting in a closet that you've never brought out for whatever reason. And now it's time to bring it out. Watch all these videos Donna's putting out. You know, a lot of it specializes in airbrushing. Watch these videos, learn this stuff. You could use it to your advantage. It could help you through this. Um, you know, if, if, you know, nothing I say is definitely gonna happen, but if it happens, it's kind of like one of those prepare for the worst hope for the best things um if you're prepared and you have yeah, like you could sidestep and be like i do airbrush arts no contact you know what i mean it's not uh it's more it's more sanitary it's more you know it's it's uh possibly a, a remedy to a possible possible problem we could face you know i think about these things i don't face paint a lot but i do face paint and i don't uh you know like a, a lot of I've been pretty much tattoos, tattoos, tattoos for the last, you know, four or five years. I body paint too, you know, but I haven't really body painted um, in a while as a gig, you know. I can imagine that traditional brush and smudge body painters Pinch might be too. might be good for body painters to start messing around with airbrush more too, you know. The material is great. Pro Air Hybrid is great for body painting. Pro Air Ink is great for airbrush tattoos, um, you know. Um, so I guess I'll take a few more questions before I depart for the day and uh, wish you guys well on your practicing and your being creative here in this uh, high quality quarantine. <laughs> Thank you, Darla. Thanks, Candice. Alcohol, bank, alcohol based ink is water resistant. That's correct. So is Pro or Hybrid is water resistant. Uh, hybrid uh, washes off a little bit easier than the ink. But it is, you know, it also is uh, water resistant. You can jump in the pool. Um, you know, you can't really do that with traditional water-based makeup. Um, to Lisa, why do you still say your own ink? Okay, so um, the ink that I created before, um, that was, it, it was more of to a, a color thing than an ink thing. And, uh, you know, essentially no i don't uh for lots of you know for like a few different reasons um and who does sell it is donna at proair.com and the color see it's, it's more about the color in 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 real tattoos the black ink what we call black ink in tattoo ink when in a heel tattoo it doesn't look black it has like a little bit of a bluish kind of hue to it okay so 
that's where this ink comes into play. It's a special color, not a special ink. Okay, it's Pro Air ink. The color is Tattoo Pro Black. This specific color has a little bit of a blue to it, so it makes the tattoo look a little bit more realistic. Um, I use black all the time too, just plain straight black. Works fine. It works great. Um, but it, But as far as when I was selling my own ink, it was because of that color and now donna hooks it up fat she's got tons of that color um you know and uh, also i you know i get paid from that when you buy when you buy that from her uh, i get a commission because i invented the color so uh works out all the way around um i don't have a airbrush makeup facility you know what i mean it's so much it's so much better of a of a product that you know uh pro Air, who does have that is able to produce it in a high quality manner in the color that I, you know, that we want as a realistic ink color. So, you know, make that sure to check once again, it's called tattoo pro black. That's the name of the color. So when you go to the, on the website, um, to the airbrush ink section, and it'll have all the colors, little swatches right next to black somewhere. Look for one called tattoo pro black that's the special color that's what i was making before um let's see here who else we got how are you lisa how are you getting the 91 percent alcohol i can't get it anywhere will pro air start selling it um i don't know if you will be able to get it from pro air that's a question donna will have to answer um generally 90 uh, alcohol uh yeah, a lot of places are sold out of it right now. Uh, you could try Amazon. You could try, uh, you know, Walgreens.com. I, I usually buy alcohol by the case off of Amazon. So I only really have to buy it once every few months, you know. So uh, I would check Amazon or uh, some other online sales, like a, maybe a medical supply Salad. or something. Check there. Um, thanks, Shanna. Uh, let's see here. 91% alcohol. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'd also Again, like a big shout out and much love to Donna. Um, one of the biggest, uh, dopest hustlers I know. Uh, she, she'd be having her hustle on all the time and she's just an amazingly great person. Got much love for you, Donna. Um, and she has a great product that keeps us all creative. Um, you know, her product keeps us all working, you know, um, and, you know, one of the other great things I love about ProWare is that, like, it, they're, a family, they're a family company. And, like, me, as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, I just, I, I, it's totally relatable. And it's totally amazing to see, like, entrepreneurs that I can, re that I relate to, um, you know, doing things like providing a great product and also not just a product, but education, you know, uh, do, doing stuff like these online classes, um, doing stuff like teaching, making sure that people are knowing, you know, like she's done YouTube videos for a long time, you know, showing how to make your airbrush setup, how to make your uh, carry around airbrush compressor kits, uh, stands for your airbrush, all this stuff, man. She's not just selling a product. She's also giving education. And that is like another one of the many reasons that um, I love dealing with, with Donna and dealing with Pro Air and Bruce and Erica and, you know, everybody who works there is just amazing. Um, so yeah, big shout out to them. I hope you guys all had, uh, had fun and learned something. Um, maybe you've heard what I've said before. Maybe you didn't, um, always feel free to hit any of us up with questions. Um, you can message, um, you know, comment on this, uh, on this thread here with questions and we'll, we'll get back to them and answer, uh, to the best, you know, to the best we can. Um.